Unmoving, Tatiana stared at her dad, it was as though the fabric of her existence had crumbled into dust and a fresh scene unfolded before her, it was difficult for her to embrace this sudden discovery since, from this new vantage point, things and people took on different roles. Tanya, who was thinking about how egotistical she came across, shifted her attention back to her husband as she exhaled. Considering all the fresh knowledge she had learned, information that was anything but pleasant it should have been him who was having trouble, it had been completely coincidental that they had crossed paths in the enormous metropolis, a little girl from a regular village family in the son of owners of factories and steamships, even though the odds of such a meeting happening were extremely low, Destiny had other ideas, Tanya had spent the previous two years answering her calling to help homeless animals in need, so she rushed to the shelter that day, never once had her parents tried to stop her from doing what she wanted to do because of her profound concern for all sentient beings, Tanya wondered if it was inappropriate to say that humanity can only be fully realized when kindness and compassion are inherent, her mother's wise words were repeated in this, Tanya grew up on a large farm, where her parents toiled away without rest or complaint from the break of dawn till sunset, but after finishing college, she went in a different direction, joining the veterinary industry via the finance department, she dreamed big without knowing her parents' financial situation, Tanya once hurried to the aid of a skinny puppy that appeared bewildered and disoriented on a busy roadway, she raced out onto the road as vehicles swerved, ignoring the danger, she was accosted by a car whose brakes squealed nearby, who asked her why she put herself beneath the wheels, because she could not bear to watch the defenseless puppy suffer, Tanya justified her actions by pointing to it thankfully. The guy that got out of the jeep was really sympathetic. He picked up the helpless animal's slender frame and silently motioned for them to get inside the car, he wanted them to get out of there before they got into it all because he was worried that not everyone had such dependable brakes, Tanya did tell him the whole tale, before quickly bidding farewell and pledging to visit the rescued ward later that evening, Kostya drove them to the shelter, helped bring the puppy to the doctor's office, and then departed, he kept his promise, by the time the Workday came to a close, Kostya's friends had the jeep waiting for them at the steps, first, he wanted to see the rescued puppy, and then he proposed getting some coffee and snacks, his life experiences had taught him the value of compassion, and this deed won Tatyana over, negative qualities were absent from Kostya's character, he was completely humble, respectful to everyone, and a doting father to Tanya. Almost immediately, their friendship blossomed into something more substantial, Tanya eagerly awaited the day when Kostya would pop the question, and that day came with all the pomp and circumstance that Tanya had come to expect, he asked her out to dinner and gave her an evasive reason for going, which ultimately led to a sincere proposal, after coming to terms with the fact that she would be seeing Kostya's parents virtually, Tanya accepted without hesitation. Even though Kostya had warned Tanya about the difficulties of dealing with his wealthy family, she knew all about their reputation, Due to frequent employee turnover, misleading financial practices, and salary delays, the gas station owners were given negative evaluations, notwithstanding this, Kostya gave Tanya the assurance that her parents would definitely approve of her, Tanya was nervous as she anxiously anticipated the momentous day, even though she was excited and full of expectation. When it came to picking out an attire to wear to the dinner party, she didn't hold back, when Kostya and her future husband arrived to the lavish estate. Her in-laws did not emerge to welcome them, she was clearly not welcomed with open arms upon first observation, Elena Petrovna, Kostya's mother, had a menacing look on her face, so the banter started right away, well, hello there, have you come to dine in Kostya's dining room today, enjoying some dinner delicacies, I hope your protege knows how to handle seafood, Elena Petrovna commented. Realizing she came from a long line of farmers, Tanya flushed all over, but none of her parents wanted for anything, they were highly educated and bright, not because they didn't like seafood, it just wasn't a menu item that they often ordered, Elena Petrovna seemed to be waiting for Tanya to mess up and show her merit, Tatyana could feel her eyes following her around the entire gathering, Stai Roman Ivanovich, a short and stocky man appeared unconcerned with everything else on the table save for the bottle of alcohol. The mood at dinner grew more tense as we moved on to dessert and coffee, the future. Mother-in-law was very critical of her son's bride-picking, 
implying that Tanya was an inappropriate match, someone from an illustrious family who was well-educated and polished would have been a better fit, in her view, when Tanya finally had enough of the criticism, she got to her feet and the cake fork clattered on the table, thank you for the meal, it was delicious, but this is utterly distasteful, I'm sorry that you judge people solely based on their wealth and social standing, Tanya said as. She left, mom, I don't care what you think, we're getting married, best of luck, Bone said as he trailed behind her to the door, meetings after that were much easier to bear, and Elena Petrovna appeared to be briefly quieted, the gravity of her son's choice may have hit her, people like her mother-in-law, nevertheless, never change, in Tanya's opinion, shortly thereafter, when the wedding drew near. Elena firmly demanded a meeting with Tanya's parents, proving her instincts correct, the couple tried to express their desire for an intimate ceremony. But Elena insisted on a more traditional gathering, a week down the road, Tanya's folks showed up, and that whole ordeal was unpleasant, the young couple's attempts to express their desire for a little ceremony seemed to be going unheard as the locals were being shamed, Elena Petrovna would flaunt her latest designer purse or act as if she needed jewelry guidance, only to remember it right away, she shot down the idea saying that anybody raised among cows in the countryside wouldn't be up to date on fashion trends and asking what the point of knowing about them is, to everyone's amazement, Tanya's father peacefully observed the artworks and miniatures around him, opting not to engage in the anticipated drama, rather than look at the old clock on the wall, he chose to examine Kostya's father's wristwatch as the dinner party came to a close, as if he were clueless to the time. Tanya was about to cry when her father consoled her by telling her to put the matter out of her mind and reassuring her of his constant support, he lived quietly, didn't explain anything more, and after nearly two weeks Tanya's parents contacted, asking her to make peace with Roman Ivanovich and Elena Petrovna in preparation for what was to come, Tanya claimed they didn't want to be involved in any events, but her father reassured her and asked for her trust, saying she will soon be pleasantly surprised. On the agreed-upon day, when they reached Kostya's parents' estate, Tanya told her fiancé. Everything, even though he didn't understand a word, Elena Petrovna, who was suddenly dazzling in diamonds, was overjoyed and expected to win, as Tanya and her parents came in an extravagant car, dressed impeccably, the hillbilly, as she saw Tanya, managed to stun her to the point that she was unable to speak, Tanya couldn't remember the last time Kostya's parents looked that way, for an instant. The sight shocked even Kostya's mother, things went downhill when Tanya's dad gently welcomed them. And casually said. And who told you that the cars are not ours, when she regained her composure, she said, oh, I see you've rented a car, well, it's not yours, of course, but not a bad attempt, Elena made repeated attempts to discredit Tanya at lunch, but neither of her parents flinched or reacted, by the time the supper was over, Elena Petrovna was completely confused. Finally getting to his feet, Tanya's dad said, well, the time has come to restore normalcy, Elena Petrovna, you can't even imagine how unlucky you were the day Kostya met our daughter, he continued by telling the tale of Kostya's true friendship with Tanya's father Semyon, beginning when they were children and continuing through their lives together, Semyon became a wealthy businessman, whereas Tanya's father chose farming, both of them had achieved success they kept in touch as friends and often met up as families, after Semyon and his wife tragically passed away in a vehicle accident. Their daughter was left at home with the nanny, due to the total destruction of the vehicle, the reason of the collision remained unknown to the authorities, nothing was discovered in the house of the buddy who passed away, even though the burial had already been held a few days prior, objects of art, jewelry, and other valuables, as well as the money in the safe, had vanished without a trace it became clear that the baby was going to an orphanage, and the servant seemed to have disappeared, a sympathetic acquaintance, nevertheless, stepped in. To save the day, he and his wife talked it over, and they ultimately decided to adopt, surprisingly, Tanya discovered that she and her parents were suddenly all by themselves, her father's indifference to her meant that he would now have to face and reawaken painful memories, there had been shifts in her family dynamic, and Tanya wondered why, it used to be that money could fix anything, and that wasn't going to change. While choking on her coffee, an obviously distressed Elena Petrovna said to Tanya's father. I see you're beginning to understand, yet, I will continue, consistent with the strategy. The cook emptied the house of all its belongings to make it look like the staff had vanished, 
Semyon had never trusted banks, thus it was free for them to decipher the code of the safe that held his large fortune. A person asked Elena Petrovna to think about her behavior after she was accused of greed. Since he had inscribed the owner's name on the back of the watch, Tanya's father knew its real history and questioned why they had taken it, when asked about the missing artwork and figurines, he clarified that they were not copies but rather the genuine articles created by famous artists, he reassured them that everything could be proven easily and brought attention to the fact that there is a specific registry for these types of art artifacts. Their efforts to conceal their activities with fresh paperwork were pointed out by Tanya's father, who emphasized that, considering their means, their activities were not as covert as they had imagined, that's why the servants were nowhere to be seen, they just disappeared during our last encounter, I did some preliminary research, and the results were neatly laid out in a stack of papers on the table, a genetic analysis confirming Tanya's ancestry, seed documents, a passage from the inventory of possessions, and information regarding the adoption. Elena and Roman's expressions become paler as the documents were shown one after the other, it seemed like Elena was aging quickly, and Roman was finding comfort in constantly restocking his premium whiskies. You have 24 hours to vacate this house and the lives of the children, Tanya is the sole heir of my friend, and now she rightfully inherits everything, you may consider legal action, but I believe you're wise enough to comprehend the consequences, considerable noise and controversy. Accompanied by even more astonishment and shock, said the father of Tanya, with all this information. Tanya had no idea what to do and felt completely lost. As he broke the awkward silence, Tanya's father apologized for the way he had revealed the truth, but he stressed how important it was to expose the imposters, their feelings for her, Tanya, her mom, and dad told her, would never alter, no matter what happened. Tanya remembered the day they prevented her from being sent to an orphanage, a turning point in her life. And she was grateful for all the love and care they gave her over the years, the newlyweds, Tanya and Kostya, decided to have a small wedding ceremony with just close relatives and friends, despite their windfall, now that Tanya was an heiress and he felt like an almost impoverished orphan, Kostya playfully wondered if he should doubt his equality with her. With this joke out of the way, he felt grateful to be married to a woman as genuine and kind as his wife, thankful for the serendipitous meeting that altered their course of life. They conveyed their gratitude for that unforgettable day that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, if she could only look into his eyes, she would understand the range of feelings he must have been experiencing when he quietly told his wife about his affair, in his tone, he hinted at scorn, but Genya was consumed by the rapid changes of everyday life, even if she wanted to understand his gaze the way everyone else did, things that were absolutely crucial and important yesterday became meaningless and insignificant in comparison to the thought that she would never see such things again in that split second, because everything happened so quickly, she eventually couldn't remember much, the investigator waited expectantly, hoping for information regarding the occurrence, but all that Genya recalled was a big, blue object, more and more lately, she kept getting sucked into the past's maelstrom, her aspirations of attending institutions persisted despite her young. She had only recently completed 10th grade, unlike her contemporaries, the Meeting with Oleg had a romantic vibe. His courtship of her was graceful, in contrast to her classmates, Oleg, a working-age adult, proposed by the sea and gave gifts as if in a fairy tale, in keeping with custom, only immediate family and friends were invited to their wedding, they worked together to secure an apartment, which was both small and cozy, thanks to the generosity of Oleg's parents and his bequest, their primary focus was on establishing themselves. Although plans for children were always there in the background, a source of friction between Genya and her husband, who was used to making decisions independently, arose over the subject of children as she worked and saved, it appeared insignificant until the night before that tragic day, when the subject of Olzhek was brought up again, but his discomfort with their emotional chats hinted at a wish to retain control, it was a turning point, over the weekend. We decided to explore what the real estate market had to offer and assess our options, let's tackle this. Apartment issue first, and then we can think about expanding our family, I'm 26, so it's not exactly an old woman, but Chen, you're starting again, my husband was never a fan of celebrating, even when my wife was, since he was afraid it would dampen his good mood, walking home from work was my typical commute, Jenya took comfort in a slow stroll, 
which she enjoyed despite the long distance. As she passed through both Putin's private areas and bustling streets, the buildings and courtyards were beautiful, and she fantasized about creating a garden there with Oleg, it would be little, but it would be theirs, and they could use it to raise a family. Evgenia hurried because she felt compelled to tell her husband about these ideas, gazing at vibrant roses that were barely visible behind a fence, she marveled at a stunning shrub, vehicles rarely drove through the region, the last thing she recalled was her own astonishment, which she had achieved with a clumsy return to the sidewalks. Edge, something purple-blue. A dark-haired person, an abrupt searing pain, and then nothing, room was dark as she woke up, she was so dazed and pained that she couldn't even turn her head to look around, opening her eyes was a battle, doctor, she's awake, Oleg said in an oddly resonant voice, as if speaking from a submerged pool, things started to fit together, and she eventually figured out what had happened, it was fate that led to her discovery in that alley, a man exiting the yard had heard some strange noises coming, from behind the gate, there is no sign of the driver who struck her, at least two weeks passed while she was unconscious, but getting well from all the wounds wasn't the worst realization, tragically, the impact on her skull rendered her completely blind, and the medical professionals were pessimistic about her prospects, Genya went through a whirlwind of emotions as she went through each step, from frenzy to agony to despair, until she finally accepted the reality, she had a hard time adjusting. To her house after her discharge, relying on touch and recollection to get around, her spouse had to help her with everything, even getting dressed needed his assistance, overwhelming feelings of powerlessness and confusion became the most difficult part after she got back to her house, her husband become emotionally distant, she finally got an honest confession from him when she confronted him head on, yes, I have someone else, what did you expect, I can't confine myself, I'm young and didn't, sign up for this kind of life, I want someone to take care of me, I'll have to tolerate someone, or else I'll be left alone, who would want you so much, this made Genya feel an overwhelming fury, how could he talk about it with such indifference, he was married to her, it wasn't her responsibility that things were difficult, it took her some time to take it all in, Oleg's reaction was severe, his voice betrayed a mischievous grin as he said, let him endure it, if he doesn't like it, he can leave. However, she would have nowhere to go, her sister was the only surviving relative, and she lived in a different city, since her parents had just passed away, there was still only remote assistance offered, Shinka was the one who first declined assistance after hearing about the accident, it was Elena, though, who stepped up to the plate and dialed a few numbers on the archaic push-button phone in an effort to summon help, knowing she couldn't continue in her current state, Genya acknowledged the difficulty of asking for assistance, particularly considering her normally upbeat and self-reliant personality, just one day after that, her sister showed up at her door and helped her pack, even though it was longer than taking the train, the walk to Elena's flat was worth it, Genya had to start from scratch when she became lost in her new surroundings, as time went on, Genya's sister was surprised when she said, I'm on vacation now and can be around, but I'll need to work eventually, let's not disband the support, and let's get to work, I can and should learn to live in this new state, eventually, her sister's panic subsided, and Genya began to adapt, measuring her world in steps from the bathroom to the kitchen to the bedroom, she was able to take a shower independently and became an expert microwave user, after that came cleaning, and Elena was extremely proud of her sister, even Genya took delight in her enhanced skills, which allowed her to gradually return to her old self. Maybe this arrangement worked for her spouse as he did little to promote independence, Genya was able to carefully explore the enclosed yard on her own after just a few weeks of walking at least she had a life, even though it wasn't her former one, Genya adjusted and learnt, and she even made her sister a basic dinner and took care of the rooms, Oleg was completely out of their minds, like if she didn't even exist. While out in the yard, again another unfortunate event occurred, Genya stumbled as she stepped to the side. Her foot slamming against the sidewalk curb, due to her disorientation and loss of count, she blacked out from the agonizing fall and a recollection of the accident, Genya recognized Elena's voice pleading with the doctor to reassure her that everything was okay as muted voices echoed, despite the passage of time, she has not yet come to, relax, everything is going to be well, no matter how hard the blow. The brain told the body to reboot so it could be rearranged, she only needs to get some. Sleep to recharge and get stronger, following then, 
the examination can be conducted in secrecy, while I laid there, a male voice seemed to both reassure and encourage me in an odd way, I was curious about the aim and nature of the examination they brought up as I walked leisurely, I became aware that I had come to, someone asked, Jinya, you scared me, how are you feeling, as I was trying to concentrate, I want to, but my head is pounding, I feel alive, said I, I was met by a man who had joined. The conversation, hello, Jenya, I'm your doctor, Andrei Ivanovich, you were unconscious when you arrived at the hospital, so we didn't have a chance to meet earlier, he stated in a gentle, silky, and kind voice I started to feel much better as time went on, the injections and intravenous fluids reduced the discomfort, and the rolling spasms went away entirely, a chat with Andrei Ivanovich was in order. When I first regained consciousness, I overheard you talking with my sister about an examination, what was that about, I wanted to know, Evgenia, to rule out fractures from the fall, we had to take x-rays while you were unconscious, Elena filled me in on the details of your situation, one doctor mentioned the possibility of permanent blindness, but upon reviewing the images, it seemed the opposite, a hematoma formed from the impact, pressing on the optic nerve. Additional imaging and tomography are required, but there is hope, we need to perform an operation to eliminate the hematoma, and there's a good chance you'll regain your sight. According to him, absolutely, I am well prepared for all tests and inspections, I enthusiastically said, I felt I had nothing to lose when Andrei Ivanovich came in with papers and said, we had a consultation, and there's an option to remove the hematoma, we need to proceed with the operation, it's not very complex, and the location is favorable, while I can't guarantee a 100% success, the chances are high. What do you think, I agreed, understanding what was at stake, either my vision would return, or nothing would change, all hope was restored even though Jenya had never seen the doctor before, she felt herself growing fond to him, just hearing his voice made her shudder, he promised her he would ask her out on a date after everything was resolved, no matter what, everything went off without a hitch, just as expected, Jenya was nervous as she anxiously awaited the bandages to be removed, slowly but surely, Silhouettes, hazy outlines, and pale highlights emerged, as her vision returned, she was filled with excitement as she remembered the sky and the sun, at last, she was able to see Andre and major milestone year had elapsed, since she was still Oleg's wife, it was time to put the past in the past, but I had been happy with Andre for about six months, she needed to move on definitively, even though he accepted her without conditions, outside. She climbed the stairs as Andre waited patiently, among the colorful sports cars in the parking lot, one stood out. In particular, a unique shade of blue that brought back a memory, the event that had rendered her blind had left her with the same color vision, Jenya scowled in confusion as she pondered how it had gotten there, with a sudden halt, Oleg unlocked the door and shoved her aside as Jenya stepped into the apartment, she couldn't help but notice the dramatic shift, I can tell you're taken aback, it's just me. I'm no longer legally blind, she nervously stated, nothing special, my dear, it's really me. The existence of another lady in their shared flat was something else she picked up on. Though everything pointed to the truth, Oleska's new roommate was there, along with her shoes, cosmetics, and a purse, with a smile on her face, Jenya made the decision to introduce herself, I am Evgenia, still the legal wife of this man. I hope not for long because I came to say that I filed for divorce, we'll sell the apartment and divide it fairly, Jenya, captivated by the lover's chat, peered toward the hallway as the ex tried to clarify himself, it was the same shade of blue as the automobile in the yard, the keychain on the keys she found, something clicked for Jenya when she inquired, excuse me, isn't that your car down there, the spouse's chosen one went pale, and her curiosity peaked, you hit me so the betrayal began long before my blindness, I'll go ahead and file a complaint against you and let the police handle it, you merely meddled, he did nothing to warrant my leaving you, what's more, all this bluster about kids and a new place to live was an elaborate hoax. Oleg looked surprised as he glanced at his mistress, apparently, he had no idea that she had planned it all, Jenya proclaimed, I will not allow you to destroy my life, as the wrath erupted all at once, you struck it rich that day, but what on earth did she have in mind for today, today, no one will find out, meanwhile, Andre, tired of waiting in the car, got up to check how things were going, he didn't trust his ex, and the slightly open door provided an excellent reason to record everything on, 
His phone, he intervened, striking the hand of the lady attempting to attack Jenya, and intercepted the situation, calm down, the police are on the way, while they arrive, I advise you to get ready, he stated, a happy ending was reached when Jenya, heeding Oleg's pleadings, decided not to file a statement, proving anything after all this time would be difficult, as a token of gratitude, Oleg left her an apartment, which Jenya quickly sold to support her sister, who had first given her faith in herself and then helped her escape. Andre might have been called to work if it hadn't been for her sister's determined efforts, she and Andre had all they needed for happiness, and there were exciting developments on the horizon, Jenya smiled, gently caressing her still invisible belly, recognizing that the most important thing inside was their happiness, with faith in God, she hoped it would be more than just one blessing in the near future. Elena had heard that he was the best doctor in the region, and her recommendation had garnered widespread respect, that encouraged her to start her own business, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.